Okay, so we are live. Hi, everybody. It's Katie Harris, owner and CEO of Nursepreneurs, and I'm here today with Elena Bavaro Viana, who is an online lawyer, and she helps entrepreneurs get the contracts uh, that they need. So that's all of us um, that are out there in business, doing business. So, Elena, thanks so much for being here with us today. Yes, I am so excited to speak to your community, all of your nursepreneurs, your entrepreneurs, and everybody starting a small business or online business. You guys are rock stars, and I cannot wait to share all the information with you guys. So should I get started? Yeah? I yeah, absolutely. Okay. So bear with me because I am not the techiest person, but let me try something, guys. Let me try something. All right. Let me see. How's that? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Hi, everybody. So we're going to be talking about understanding legal. Now I have two screens, so I want to make sure I'm seeing everything correctly. So we're going to talk about the legal basics for online businesses, coaches, entrepreneurs, nursepreneurs, you name it. This is going to be a general legal presentation so you guys really understand what is going on. So before we get started, Katie already graciously introduced me, but my name, of course, is Elena. Um, I am a lawyer, an entrepreneur, also a business mentor, and I like to call myself an overachiever. So before starting my own uh, practice, I was you know, a former international lawyer. I used to work for the United Nations, um, and then I also used to work at the International Criminal Court, and then I moved back home and started EFE Legal. So this is where all this information is coming from. There is a long history of legal here. <laughs> So this would not be, guys, a legal presentation without a legal disclaimer, okay? So get used to it. So by accessing or participating in this presentation, either now, live, or later when you watch the recording, guys, this is not legal advice, and I want to make that clear. This is really just meant to be educational and informational only. You've not retained me as your lawyer. There's no privilege here. So even if you guys ask any questions, just make sure that you don't drop any sensitive information. Um, and if you ever do need a lawyer, please make sure that you do reach out to the appropriate one. So guys, you're in the right place if you feel overwhelmed, scared, legal side of your business, yikes, right? And a lot of us feel that way. So don't even worry, we're gonna make it less scary. You're also in the right space, place if you feel like the legal stuff is too expensive or that you need your first few clients to make you feel like it's worth it. And I hear this one all of the time. People deprioritize legal all of the time because they cannot financially justify it at the beginning because they think it's too expensive. And so we're gonna bust that myth as well. You're also in the right place if you guys just feel clueless when it comes to legal stuff. So you don't even really know what you don't know, especially surrounding contracts, which is gonna be the main topic and focus of today's presentation. So you got this, all right? Deep breath. We're gonna take over all of the basics so you can really feel empowered in your business and just make decisions like the true CEO that you are because as entrepreneurs and nursepreneurs, you guys are actually revolutionizing the game. You're doing things your own way. So no matter what, you got this, hands down. So all you need is, and we're gonna take a little breather here, is pen and paper, tall glass of water, ready mind because you're just gonna get a little crash course now. I'm going to take my own advice and get some water. Okay, so I wanted to start with legal services because a lot of people don't actually know why they need a lawyer, what a lawyer can help them with, why your small business should look into getting a lawyer. So as a small business owner, I really wanted to highlight some of the things that may come up for you in your business that are really important. So the first one being business entity structure and setup. OK, this is basically telling the government, hey, Gov, I'm starting a business. This is what it is. This is what we're doing. And this is how we're setting it up. So in the United States, you have sole proprietor, you have LLCs, S corps and so on. Um, in Canada, there are sole proprietors or incorporations. So any jurisdiction you in, there are multiple different business entities. So you really want to make sure that you're speaking to someone in your jurisdiction about which one is right the type of business that you are starting because each business really truly fits into a different structure than the other. So it's a good conversation to have. Now, the next three are going to be our main focus today is you want to definitely speak to a lawyer about contract drafting. If you're doing more personalized, customized work, 
you want to talk about contract review. Maybe you got a contract from someone else. You're not sure if it's good or not. Maybe you're working on a big partnership. You want to make sure that your rights are protected. Maybe you're actually getting a new job and you want to make sure that you can have your side business while you're employed with someone else. So contract review is also something you may want to talk to a lawyer about. Then of course, lots of lawyers sometimes offer contract templates. And so this is where you can get general legal contract templates that are specific to your industry niche and focus in order to hit the ground running from day one without a giant lawyer price tag attached to it. Other things that are really important to consider are name searches. So if you have a name that you want to call your business or your product or maybe a course or some kind of ebook that you're creating or a service, you want to make sure that that name is available in the marketplace. You also want to consider trademark applications. So right now, the United States is executing more trademark applications than ever before in history. So that really shows me that there are a lot of people considering their brand identity as an important focus. And so if you are looking to register and get an a name in the marketplace, trademarking right now is really important. There's also copyright application. So copyright is different than trademark. So trademark is your brand. What are you known as in the marketplace? But copyright is more if you're protecting a specific type of work. So maybe you've created a literary work, you've written a book. Um, maybe you want to copyright a proprietary method or framework that you've created in your business. You know, this can go anywhere from even a song, right? Nokia copyrighted their own Dingle Dong. So you want to also copyright certain frameworks. Now, we see copyright a lot at the bottom of presentations. You also see it at the bottom of mine. And at Common Law in North America, there is a law that basically says anything that comes from our brain, anything that we have truly created, we own the copyright too. And so you're allowed to use the C on your presentations to really just notify that I am the author of this work. But if you want to have that government level protection, if you ever were to go to court and someone were to steal it, you do want to register it so that you do have that. So that's really another conversation to have. Other things to consider are legal audits. So maybe you have a business and you don't even know. <laughs> You're like, I'm doing all these things. Where are the gaps? Where is my ship sinking? So you can have a legal audit to see if your product suite and your business is covered and protected and maybe create a roadmap for the future so that you're able to financially prepare. Because remember, the legal is not a one-stop shop. It's always an evolving process. And we're going to talk about that with contracts a lot because you're going to see that every new product that you put in your product suite, every new service or offering that you create needs its own contract. It needs to be protected separate from the other ones. So this is maybe when you're like, I have so many things going on. I don't even know what I need. A legal audit may be a good place to start. Then you can do demand letters. And this is typically if you need to send a cease and desist if someone's stealing your branding or maybe someone didn't pay you, you could send them letters. You can also do legal consultations for general legal advice to make sure that you're doing things in compliance with your business. And then, of course, business development advice and planning. So I think it's really important to kind of know what a business lawyer can do for you. And these are some of the buckets that they can help you with. So when you're starting out on your journey, a lot of the questions that I get in my practice is like, what can you even help me with? And this is kind of it, okay? Woo! So let's talk all about contracts, all right? The meat and potatoes. Okay, guys, tough love. Your contracts should be your number one priority as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a nursepreneur. Like, contracts are critical. It is your greatest tool. It is your greatest defense. And it is truly your greatest asset. Because, guys, without it, you're naked, you're butt naked out in the elements. It's cold, you have no shelter. That's literally what you're doing to your business. So you really need to be prioritizing them, okay? Before we go even one step further, that hand-me-down contract that a coach gave you or that DIY contract you Googled and put together yourself or maybe something your graphic designer copy and pasted to your website, you are still naked. Yes, you are. And there are a few reasons for this. That hand-me-down <laughs> isn't going to work for you because it worked for someone else. And that contract you Googled, you don't even know what it says. So that's just not going to work for you either. And that one that your graphic designer copy and paste said, you guessed it, it's not meant for you. So you're still naked. So you really should be considering getting contracts from a reputable source always. Okay, now the value of contracts, because this is that whole myth, it's too expensive. I don't have enough clients. My business isn't generating income, okay? It may be an investment, guys, to get it right, 
but you need to think of your offer. You need to think of your service, okay? So I know a lot of us are moving into the online space. So let's say you have a private coaching offer or a private service that's actually worth maybe $3,000 and you sell it 10 times to 10 different clients. So now your business is booming, but the value of that contract is actually now worth $30,000 thousand dollars because you're using it multiple times with the same product so you want to get it right and make sure it actually protects you because if one little domino falls off out of all those 10 clients you better believe the others are going to find out and they're going to come after you for the exact same flaw so truly the value of your contract goes up and up and up the more you use it and so that is why it is an important investment from the beginning and it only gains more value the more you use it cool okay so the basic agreements, okay? I pulled a few here, and truly when I was thinking about this presentation, there were so many different contracts we could have gone into, but I know that we're kind of doing all different businesses, so I wanted to talk about the main basics you should be made aware of at this point, and then of course there are more specific ones for your industry and niche, okay? So the basic agreements, you have the client agreement, you have a terms of purchase, which we're gonna talk about, you have your website protection policies, you have a media release form, which is really critical in the online space, speaker agreements, confidentiality agreements, and independent contractor agreements. So taking our first one in turn, your client agreement is the bread and butter of your online business, okay? So this is a legally binding document that helps you build out, create, and manage expectations when taking on new clients or to perform services for them. So whatever you're offering, generally speaking, as an entrepreneur, as a service provider, I'm assuming it's you providing a service to one other person, right? And so you wanna make sure that that relationship is covered with a client agreement that specifies the terms that you are delivering to them. So what's the energy exchange you're giving them, but also, what is the energy exchange they're giving you? So maybe you're delivering all of these services and in exchange, they need to pay you a certain amount with certain terms, okay? In our head, as you know, beautiful entrepreneurs, we are thinking all of my clients are gonna be so dreamy and this is how it's gonna be. And we just, we have this idea of what working with human beings are gonna be like. Now, your client agreement is basically putting that all on paper and making sure that your dream expectations are actually matched, okay? So you wanna use this anytime you get a new client, you're performing any services, and also to get paid on time, okay? Importantly, a lot of times we think, eee, but that's kind of scary. I don't wanna give contracts to someone, all right? It's actually 10 times scarier to perform a service without a contract because there's no guarantee the other person's gonna pay you, and then there's no guarantee that you're actually gonna even serve you know, the service to them. So it really is a great way for you both to lay down, what are we doing? Almost like a checklist. This is what I'm doing, bum, bum, bum. This is what I need from you in return, bum, bum, bum. So client responsibility, maybe scheduling, maybe they need to show up at a certain time, maybe they need to give you passwords or login details to something for you to perform your work. You lay it all in there and everything is clear. Okay, now, there are four types of client agreements, all right? I don't wanna go over your head, but there's a couple here. So the first one is your one-on-one -on -one client agreement, which is you delivering a service to another one. Now this can include VIP intensive days, strategy sessions, consultations, mini retreats, anything like that of a smaller nature, but basically it's you and another person, okay? The second one is a service agreement, and it's slightly different because with a service agreement, you're actually providing a service with a deliverable at the end. So this is where they're actually getting something. So a very, very basic example would be a graphic designer. They're actually delivering something to you at the end. Maybe a photographer is another example. They're giving you something at the end. So if you are getting something, you want a service agreement because within that, there are additional clauses that are very different, okay? The third would be more of a group coaching, group setting, group learning, education, and agreement. And the idea here is one to many because the terms are going to be different there as well. So for example, your one-on-ones, you may have rescheduling fees because you could reschedule sessions or calls or services, but with your group, not so much. These are kind of the set days. These are the set times. Show up, don't show up, do the work, don't do the work. It's a bit different, right? Our fourth one is your e-course terms of purchase, okay? Now this one is an online digital course, digital selling physical product document, okay? It's also our checkout page or checkbox contract. So it's a legally binding document between you and your customer or your purchaser that is found at the checkout page or next to the purchase button, okay? 
So imagine anytime you purchase anything from Sephora, <laughs> right? There's always like by clicking here, you agree to our terms of purchase. This is essentially that contract. So it doesn't need a signature. It just needs to be there and to live there with all of your terms. And it's going to outline how your purchaser can utilize your product, how they, um, how they can use your sales policies, what your sales policies are, what are your payment policies, do you have a refund policy, any disclaimers related to your online services, any liability that they need to be aware of, or intellectual property. So really good uses of this are if you are hosting a membership. Maybe you have an e-course, a digital course, a mini course that you're selling where you filmed yourself and you're educating and you're putting it on there. Maybe you have digital products like e-books, um, master classes, anything like that. Maybe you have online ticket sales, like a virtual summit. It could even be a physical product. So maybe you're, you have a beautiful boutique that sells scrubs or scrunchies or whatever you want it to be, merch relating to your brand. You want a terms of purchase on there. And the important part here is that they need to tick the box before they make the payment, okay? So I have an example here of even the way Apple does it on our phones. They just, here's the whole terms and conditions. We click okay and it's done, we've consented. It does not mean we need to read the contract. It is enough that we consented. And truly, if anything does go wrong, it is the consumer's fault for not reading and not taking the time to read it. So it doesn't mean that they're not bound to it though. So this is also really, really important. Ooh, all right. Now our website protection. So this is kind of three for the price of one guys. Okay, when building your own business, you want to own your own space online, okay? Now we know social media, Facebook, all of that is rented space, can go away any day. But our website is our own, just like our email list, we own these things. And it is important to protect them, okay? So on your website, you should have a terms and conditions, a privacy policy, and a disclaimer. Now, importantly, before I go to the next slide, a privacy policy is a legally required document. I'm gonna explain why, okay? These website policies, they live at the footer of your website just down here, right? Terms of use, terms and conditions, it goes by many names. You have a privacy policy, you have a disclaimer. The important thing is they live on your website as three clearly distinct buttons that someone can click and read your policies. Your job as an entrepreneur is to make the policies easy and accessible, okay? Their job as people interacting with your website is to be able to find them if they wanna learn what's going on and to make sure they abide by the rules. Each one of these typically says, and the way I draft all of mine, is that just by virtue of somebody on your website and interacting with it and going to a new page, they have inherently agreed to the terms they're in. Okay, so what does each policy do? So starting with your terms and condition, this policy basically outlines how your website can be used. So what they can do or cannot do, so maybe we're restricting certain activities, we're telling them this is all my intellectual property, so all those cool testimonials of previous clients that I've worked with, you cannot take those, those are mine, right? Maybe we're even maintaining our right to abuse, um, to ban abusive content, right? So maybe we have a blog. Anytime somebody posts something terrible on there, we wanna make sure we get rid of it. But importantly, your terms and conditions actually extends to your social media, okay? So I know we're doing this in Katie's group. So for example, Katie has uh, terms and conditions on her website, which basically gives her the permission in her Facebook group to delete any comments if she wanted to that weren't part of the company culture or weren't part of really the culture that she's emulating in this group. So she has that control because she's written it in her terms and conditions on her own site, okay? It's also important if maybe you are performing certain um, maybe you're doing video tutorials on your Instagram as part of your marketing campaign, right? So for example, if there's any health coaches or fitness coaches, maybe you're performing any kind of fitness exercises within here, you're telling people how to breathe, maybe breath work, anything like that. This will basically outline the disclaimer all the way over there as well saying, listen, what we're doing over there, <laughs> Be careful. It's over there. It's protected. Just so you know, we're fine. We're not guaranteeing any results. Like we're good, right? Because the last thing you want is for you to post something on your social media or your Facebook. And then somebody does it. Let's say they do a box jump at home, slip, break the leg. And now they sue you for your workout video being faulty. You want your terms and conditions combined with your disclaimer here to tell them, mm, no, sweetheart, like that's not how it works. Okay. Your privacy policy is your second and this is your legally required one, okay? This outlines to the user how you're gathering information about them. So this information is cookies, emails, 
payment information, okay? It's legally required under, you know, the European GDPR. It's also legally required under COPA, the California Online Privacy Protection Act, and also in Canada under PIPETA, and of course, under the Australia Privacy Act. So it's a wide range. So what that means is, let's say I am in, I don't know, let me pick a random country. Let's say I'm in, I don't know, Jamaica. Okay, let's say I'm in Jamaica. If an American citizen comes to my website in Jamaica under the California Online Privacy Protection Act, I am legally required to have a privacy policy to protect them. Okay. Now, in Canada, I have to have one under Pipetta, but that means if a European also comes to me, I need to do that under the European GDPR. So essentially, if you have a website, and even if you're not located in any of these four regions that I discussed, there is a guarantee that an American citizen or Canadian or Australian or European will be coming to your website. Now, America being the largest market is a very high probability that Americans will be coming to your website. So you do wanna make sure you are legally protected and have this on your website. Now, if you are in any of these regions, you can actually get fined for not having a privacy policy. A couple ways that you can find is under government law. Now that's state specific. Um, you may get actually a monetary fine, but there are other penalties as well. So for example, Google, it is against their policies to send their cute little Google bots to your website if you don't have a privacy policy. So what that means is their Google bots won't come and check out your website for SEO, which is eventually going to harm the growth of your business, okay? Same with Facebook. Facebook also has policies that say they will not lead ads back to a website that doesn't have a privacy policy. Now, whether they always enforce it, maybe not always the case. However, it is part of their terms. Okay. Whew. Now, the third one is your disclaimer, guys. So this really is crucial to the success of any business and in limiting your liability, you want to make sure people know that you're not responsible for something, okay? You can also say I'm not responsible for any results and not responsible um, for guaranteeing any success here. So you want to make sure you have a disclaimer on there that's like everything that we're even saying in this website, education only, like it's just information. My whole blog don't take all that advice for real. None of it's professional. It's just my opinion. And so you want to put these systems in place. Amazing. Now, in case you still have any doubts, have you heard of the beautiful McDonald's case? All right. Some of you are probably laughing right now. Okay. But here is the case. This woman went through a McDonald's drive through Okay. She ordered a cup of hot coffee and she spilt it on herself. And because the cup was hot, right, it had hot water and she, you know, she burned herself, she actually sued McDonald's and she won $2.9 million. Now, a lot of us are probably thinking, well, it's coffee, duh, it's hot, okay? But the problem here was that McDonald's didn't have the little disclaimer at the bottom of their coffee cup that said hot on it. And now you're gonna see any fast food restaurant, any chain, anybody that's offering you paper cups to leave or to go will have a cute little symbol on there that says it's hot as a disclaimer. So even if you think it's common sense, it's in your job and in your best interest to write down what you're disclaiming yourself against because you never know. You might have a woman suing you for hot water and winning a lot of money, all right? Now, a media release form, and this is my favorite, my favorite contract, um, especially if you're doing anything in the online space, and I'm assuming the majority of you are in some way, shape, or capacity, okay? This document gives you ownership over media and content. So it's used for photography, videography, voice, written word, anything like that, and it effectively allows the owner of any content to release, to release their ownership of that media over to you for you to now edit and use it how you want, okay? So let me give you a very practical example. As we're starting our businesses, and I'm sure you learned this a lot from Katie, is it is imperative to have social proof. It is imperative to show what you can do, that you've worked with others in order to basically create more sales traction, marketing, and getting the ball rolling for you. So. When someone gives you a testimonial, and in the online space, we like to do video testimonials a lot, put those on our website. We use them in our content, our sales pages. We always get like those cute little YouTube clips. We see this a lot. The person that's giving you that testimonial, for all legal arguments, they are the director, <laughs> they are the writer, they are the producer, and they are the star of the show. They own that content left, right, and center legally. Even though they're giving it to you, they still own it. So in order for them to basically release ownership of that and give it to you, it's with a media release form. 
Okay. So why does this actually matter? Because let's say someone gave you a five minute testimonial, for example, and you use one minute of it to fit an Instagram story, or you cropped it a little bit to fit this like beautiful testimonial montage you've made. Well, what you could have actually done is misconstrue what the person was saying. So for example, if the testimonial said, Elena smelled really bad, was late to every call, but she had a great smile, but I would never recommend her. And then I cropped it to just say I had a great smile. That's fully misrepresenting what was being said and actually can cause a lot more damage. If you own it though, you feel free to edit it however you want, put stickers on it, crop it. It's completely fine. It's yours 100%, okay? Other great examples. If you have a podcast, there is a podcast general release form, similar to media release form, but specific for podcasts, which basically says that you now own someone's audio, right? Their voice, which is really, really important because let's say that that podcast now goes on and is generating a significant amount of income with the media release, you own all of that. Without it, there's nothing stopping that person, you know, the guest that you had to come back and be like, hey, Karen, like, you know, you and me, we did that and you're making a million bucks, like half of that's kind of mine, right? So you want to be like, no, no, Karen, you sign the release. It's mine, right? I apologize if there are any Karens. I'm sure you're lovely. But like, you just want to make sure that you own everything as you're growing and as you're scaling in your business. So this is important for any lives um, that you do, any collaborations, any digital work that you're doing, any courses, anything that you create that you want to own, make sure you actually own it. Okay. Speaker agreements. Now, this is another one. So as we're growing our online businesses or our businesses, we're probably having summits, collaborations, maybe we're having guest speakers. You want to have a speaking engagement agreement, which can be really, really helpful for you. Okay, this can help you dictate when a speaker needs to arrive, what happens if they need to cancel, any remuneration, any promotional requirements. So this is really specific for all the entrepreneurs and nursepreneurs in here who have podcasts, right? You want to say, listen, I'm doing all the work over here, but maybe I'm going to require you to actually promote it on your story so we can judge up a little excitement here. The last thing you want is to give someone this entire marketing range and they aren't doing any of the work in return. So a speaker agreement can help limit that by basically saying these are the terms it can also help for example if um with the speaker agreement someone goes out and buys himself a fancy microphone you can say look that's on you i'm not paying any expenses so of course it really depends what the nature is but even if you're doing virtual summits um speaking engagements as part of your revenue streams this is something to heavily consider Guys, now our confidentiality agreements, and I know a lot of you guys are familiar with this, but this is commonly known as a non-disclosure agreement, okay? Now only doctors and lawyers are awarded the highest legal protection towards confidential information or privileged information, okay? All other relationships don't technically have this, right? If they're outside of the scope of the medical field, they don't have the same level of protection, okay? So if you are working with somebody where you want to bring that type of protection over, or you're not 100% sure if you're bringing it over, if you're dealing with sensitive information, you may want to consider getting this agreement. And so this is great for the health coaches, mindset coaches, life coaches that are kind of in the health field, um, but moving away from the medical. It can also be great when hiring employees, staff, or contractors. You want to say, listen, you now work with me. Everything that's going on here, all the trade secrets are being protected. So there are so many different ways to use a confidentiality agreement, but effectively you're creating almost a veil of secrecy, of privacy between your relationship of, between um, you and your client. So really truly look at your offers, look at your services and say, is this something that we need? Is this something that would help us? And of course, last but not least is our independent contractor agreement, okay? This is a legally binding document that outlines the terms of the relationship when bringing on a contractor to assist you with a project, okay? Now, importantly, when you're hiring contractors, that is what they are, contractors. They are not employees. Please understand employees need a whole other agreement. But contractors are great for short-term hiring, project-based hiring, independent tasks, right? So you want to make sure that this is you use this whenever you're being like, hey, you and I should team up on this project. Maybe I only need you for a couple hours a week on this project. Maybe I need to outsource some tasks to you. So you want to make sure that you get that relationship in writing. This is one of the most imperative is when you're hiring out contractors in order to assist you in your business in order to grow and scale. Okay. Whew. Now, I get this question a lot. What if a site already has contracts? So perhaps we're selling on Etsy or we're using Kajabi, whatever the case may be, maybe we use Shopify and they have all of their own contracts on there. 
So I want you to think about the law as a series of relationships. There is a relationship between you and the platform. So let's use Kajabi as an example. You and Kajabi have a relationship. So you are subject to all of the terms of Kajabi, but then you're using it to sell to your customers. Now your customers don't care about Kajabi's rules, but they do need to care about your rules. So you will have a separate contract for that. So wherever you can find relationships, it is always a really good idea to basically protect those with a contract, okay? Your business is meant to be a life source for you. So you want to make sure that everybody that's purchasing from you or interacting with you is on the same page about some of the rules that are going on so that you have streamlined communication and a paper trail in place. Remember, you're doing this as your livelihood, so you have to respect it as your livelihood. We made it, guys. All right? Quick breath, quick glass of water. That was awesome, Elena. Thank you so much for this. Um, I have a question. Yeah. So, say um, you had, can you still hear me? And my internet's gone in and out, but Jill said you were fine. Um, let's say you have somebody join your course uh, and they stop paying. Is that something these contracts will um, protect? Absolutely. So in the contracts, they talk about, especially the terms of purchase, um, the membership site agreement. Those are the two that deal specifically with automatic payments. If someone's coming in as an automatic payment, it talks about charge back disputes, charge back disputes. That's what I'm trying to say. And so what the terms are around that to basically give ownership to the other person they've committed, they have given you permission to basically automatically take payment from their bank account and what the terms are, what happens if they stop paying. So you get to dictate those terms. You can completely kick them out be like, bye-bye. Um, or it will say if they don't pay within a certain allocated amount of days, that that point you're able to basically take next steps and that the onus of those next steps, let's say you, you hire a lawyer, those charges and those fees are gonna be their fault and their responsibility to pay. So it does discuss it in length so that the idea is if you ever get into the situation, you can say, look, I'm following the rules, I'm kicking you out if that's the route that we're going, you're gonna no longer get access to anything that's going on until the payment is made. And then of course, if you don't pay, here are the next steps that we're taking. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and, yeah, absolutely. And what about um, copywriting course material? Is that something that can be done? So yes. So two things. Every single contract, if they're properly drafted, and we're going to talk about that, is should um, should include an intellectual property clause. And what that is, and they're they're formulated that you own all of the copyright and all of the things that have come out of your beautiful brain. As a default, you own them. And what you're doing is for every single person signing that contract, you're giving them a singular license. So let's say in a group setting, you're giving them workbooks, materials, access to your lectures, you're giving them a single license. So only that person can access them within the confines of your program. That does not mean that they can then give it to their friend and Jim Bob and maybe their mom's uncle. They're not allowed to do that. If they do that, they're basically breaching the agreement and then they're subject to your termination. Um, your termination clauses. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Uh, so we will put a link in here so that if you um, are interested, and I, I know many of our nurses need the different bundles that you have. Do you want to talk a little bit about yes. uh, some of the bundles that you have? So I'd love to. So this is the next part because guys, you are personally invited for an exclusive opportunity to purchase your own contracts for entrepreneurs. Now I've teamed up with Katie and Jill in order to create specific bundles for nurses and the health practices um, industry. And I'm really, really excited to kind of tell you a little bit about that. So these are contract templates that are designed simply, you're gonna see here, they're reliable contract templates that I use in my own firm with my own clients. And what we did is we made them in order for you to fill in the information that you need based off of your own values and, and policies in your business. Okay. Each contract actually comes with its own user manual that explains step by step how to customize the contracts to your needs in order to make it as easy as possible. Now, the beautiful thing here is because these templates are actually generic, what I didn't mention before is what's important is to have 
templates that are not only formulated for small businesses, but are formulated for your industry. Each industry has their own specific problems that arise, right? And a lawyer's job is to understand the horror stories and put that in the contract to make sure you're not gonna have any problems. So what we've did in the user manuals is we've actually laid out examples. So for example, for the refund policies, we've laid out several examples that you could choose from if you don't have an idea which one could work in order to formulate your own. Others, um, when we're dealing more specifically with the health practices, some of the contract templates are even going to explain when you need to put, if it's a HIPAA compliant, what the clause you need to insert there. And if you're maybe in Canada, if it has to be under HIPAA, that you have put that in there as well. So we lay these out for you in the user manual, easy peasy, and it actually will tell you how much time each contract should take in order for you to create. Super simple. So here's kind of one of the contract user manuals in play. So they're really beautiful. And what's included in the shop? So contracts for entrepreneurs, we currently have over 30 templates and then we've created additional ones specific for your niches and your industries, okay? So you can see there's a lengthy list here and I'm gonna go through everything we spoke about today is on there, including the website policy protections, informed consent forms for health practices, independent contractor agreements, everything for your website. There's gonna be health coaching agreements, informed consent forms, and we're building out more and more each each week in order to basically cater to your needs. Okay. And what we've done on the website is we've created an entire section specifically for nurses and health practices. So you can go on there. It's super simple. You can shop by industry based off of your need. And that way you can see which one works for you, which one you feel would be best in your industry. And if you don't have it, feel free to send us an email. And if there's a great enough need, we'll always create one. And of course, as part of this presentation, Katie and I'm sure Jill are going to drop their link in the bio for you to go purchase, but please feel free to even use this discount code for, for accessing this presentation, for being a part of this live, for maybe seeing it a little bit later, 10 for you so you can get 10% off because we created this just for you. Honestly, when Katie and Jill approached me a month ago, I was so excited because what they did is they effectively outsourced. They're like, listen, we have this big, big need for our clients. Everybody's asking for this. Like we need to create something specific for them. And that's exactly what we did. So the majority of these are created exactly with you guys in mind. And all you have to do is hop on there, grab what you need. You can use the code in order to help you out and you can become obsessed with your contracts. All right. So that's it. So I'll leave this here for you. There's a QA. and a if there's any more yes. questions. <laughs> no, I love this. This is, I mean, it, like I said, it's just so needed. And it is, like you said, uh, something we put on the back burner and think, well, when I get a couple clients, then I'll, I'll look into legal stuff. And it's just kind of like something you keep putting on the back burner. And it's a huge mistake. Um, it's not something you want to do at all because you know, and I, I understand maybe you can speak a little bit to this too, but if your your website is up and you're educating, even if you don't have clients, you're still liable, right? 100%, Katie. And that's the thing is you started a business and legal is part of your startup cost. This is a necessary cost. You can't go on in your life being like, oh, I'm not going to pay taxes, right? We don't think like that. And legal is the exact same thing. Your contracts, you can't start a business without contracts. And it is one of the most imperative first steps that you take because even if you're not sure about your business registration. So for example, in the United States, let's say you're just a sole proprietor and you haven't quite taken the jump to an LLC, right? Which is your limited liability company, which separates that liability from you. If you use a contract, you're creating that shield already between you and the client in order to create that limitation of liability for yourself. So Truly, and I say this all the time, and I, this is like my tough love, but if you don't do contracts, then you're not respecting your business and you shouldn't be in business because this is something that is integrally important and you want to make sure you get it right from day one so you are protected. And as your business evolves, every new level will require a different contract, a different product offering, which is a different template in order to satisfy that. So one of the biggest mistakes is people think, oh, I just started, I'm just... You know, my first clients, like my mom's sister, like, you know, my aunt or my best friend. But the problem here, guys, is in the online space, and a lot of you guys are in the online space, is we have the capacity. I mean, look at Katie. You have the capacity to start and then scale so fast. And in a year or two years from now, you may be making, you know, rolling it and having a great old time, but those clients from two years ago can still come after you because of a statute of limitations, right? 
So for example, in Canada, we have a statute of limitations of two years, but I know in the United States, like New York, breach of contract is six years. That means that if, if you did something wrong six years ago, they can still come after you. So you want to make sure that you're tightly knit from day one, if you truly believe your business is going to scale and get you to the next level. Hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, and it's, yeah, absolutely. And it, it's definitely something because people always ask me, well, how much is it going to cost to start a business? And I always tell them, you know, you have to factor in this, these legal costs. You have to factor in some mentoring. You have to factor in legal costs. So even if you're doing something that has like zero overhead, which is almost nothing, um, <laughs> you still are looking at, uh, you know, it's uh, money that needs to be spent on the foundation, the basics, uh, and that's your insurance, your legal stuff, um, the business setup, all of that stuff has to be done. And it needs to be done first because you'll never find the time to go back and implement it correctly, right? There's <laughs> always time, well, you know, it's always like we yeah. have time to do things as second time around, but not the first. <laughs> you're, so, you're so right, Katie, because the contract you implement today will only be valid from today onwards. They don't work retroactively. You can't just start working with someone and then three months later be like, oh, by the way, Nancy, please sign this. Like, that's not how it works. Like, you can't go backwards with the law. So the contracts actually need to be signed right away before payment is even exchanged in order to be valid. So you got to do it from day one. You just got to. <laughs> Yeah. And it, it also puts you in a more professional position as well. Like, you know, I wouldn't buy a house from somebody just on their word. You know, it's like you want a contract and you want that contract to state what it is that you're buying, because that's the other area that I feel like we get into trouble is that, you know, I'll say, you know, let's say I say, oh, well, you know, I can help you start a business. And in my mind, that means one thing. But in the client's mind, maybe they're thinking, well, starting a business to me means that I need to be making six figures. So you need to mentor me until I make six figures. Uh, and there's that complete disconnect without the contract. There's a huge disconnect. And a lot of people forget that in the online space. They don't realize that an online business is the same as a restaurant, for example, a brick and mortar. I mean, a restaurant has to pay for things for at least 12 months before they even open doors, before they even sell their first cappuccino and make two bucks, you know? They have to pay for a whole year of rent and contractors and licensing and insurance and legal and accounting. Like, And online businesses are no different, okay? You have all the things Katie just said, your insurance and your legal and your, you know, your mentorship, you know, your softwares, there is overhead and um, it is less, it is less, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It doesn't mean that because you're online, the rules don't apply. They still do. And you can get bit that much harder in the online space, especially if you have a large platform. Like, I mean, Katie, you have a beautiful platform. If you weren't protected and somebody came tomorrow, right, for example, I mean, I've seen it happen. Reputations online are so fragile. And so you want to make sure that you're covered, you're knit, you're safe, you're doing everything by the book. Because when that day comes, and unfortunately, there is a rainy day for everybody, you want to be like, I'm good. <laughs> like you want to feel good and sleep well that night because a lot of careers are ruined. And unfortunately, in my own practice, I see this way too often with clients who were at the top of their game and then one bad client turned into a small bushfire. And the next thing you know, things that they did two years ago when they were nobody completely destroyed their multi-million dollar business today. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, and um, Elena, can you talk a little bit about how how um you know how does the legal system look on to people that are like, well, I didn't know that I needed that? Good question, Katie. Okay, so in North America, United States, Canada, UK, common law, Australia, ignorance is not an excuse of the law, all right? It does not matter. And I said this to you even before, even if your client doesn't read the contract, it does not mean that they are not legally bound to it, okay? Just because you said, oh, I don't know, does not mean the repercussions are not real, right? So it's not an excuse. <laughs> it's not a real thing. And I'm telling you right now, it's not a real thing. And you know this, truly you do. And so the procrastination to not take action on it is truly more a sign of your own mental blocks that you don't believe enough in your business to actually make it. And so you want to treat it with the respect. And I see this all the time. Everybody that walks away with contracts, they sign clients like this because their energy shifted. 
they're like, yeah, I am a professional now. I just did the real business things, which is crazy because this is kind of a requirement, but we put it off and then their energy shifts. And then the next thing you know, they've gone full time. They have clients signed. They sign clients that afternoon. It's because your energy shifts and your energy attracts, obviously, the successes in your business. So everything goes together. Yeah, it is because a lot of people, um, like you said, they have like one toe in the water and, you know, like, oh, I wonder if I can do this, but I'm not going to be, you know, take a whole, I'm not going to spend all this money and be professional about it um, and just see what happens. And it's it's not a great start to, to your business. So you want to do everything professional and you have to have that belief, that unshakable belief that you're going to do this. Like you just have to to jump in. I mean, the water's really nice. You gotta just jump in and do it. <laughs> the water is so nice. And it's true, you have to jump in. And I will say, if I could even say, Katie, um, when it comes to contracts too, what matters more than anything, and I didn't mention this, but what matters more than anything is that they are niche specific, industry specific, designed for you, because you get to decide which law applies. Right. So even when you're jumping all in, another question I get is, well, I take clients all over the world or internationally or whatever the case is. But you get to decide. And in that user manual I showed you, it actually tells you that where to write which law applies and if your law applies. So what that means is if you have a client and I'm using Jamaica again as an example, for example, um, if anything goes wrong, you basically told them, well, listen, you have to come and sue me in my courts over here under my law. You know, hopefully it never comes to that, but you get to decide that. And so that's all laid out in the user manuals as well. So no matter what, you're jumping in the pool and it is a nice swim, like Katie said. <laughs> the other thing you know, we really appreciate about having Elena is that, um, you know, the nurses in business is somewhat of a relatively novel phenomena. Um, it's really come into its own in the last couple of years but a lot of lawyers don't know what to do with us. So they're not sure about this space. Um, and we, we don't have our own kind of like legal space. And that's really what you're creating and crafting here. It's yeah. just this like beautiful space for, for nurses that's industry specific. And because we don't follow under the laws of the doctors and those contracts are written for the physicians and, and not for nurse businesses, which are distinctly different. They are distinctly different. And so, I mean, and that's the beautiful thing is like I, I showed you before, we're creating a whole industry. And as more contracts are coming, we have a few more in development. And so if you go to the website and you even get on the email list, you'll be able to be notified whenever new products are dropping. And of course, like I said, like if there's anything that you're looking for, I mean, you can notify Katie, you can send um, contracts for entrepreneurs an email and we can see what we can create that's specific for you in order to help you keep your costs low because that's the beautiful thing with these templates as well, right? They are templates, which means that they are a fraction of the price as going with a lawyer. And I can tell you this, guys, because they are literally one third of what I charge my actual clients in my practice. And so, and I'm giving them all to you. So they are truly well written. Like I, I use them in my own business as well. And that says a lot as a lawyer. And we can create them specifically for you. And that's the difference. You want to make sure you're working with a lawyer that understands your business, that understands what you're creating in order to cover you. Because if you're going to a lawyer that deals with, um, let's say, coffee shops, right? They know all the horror stories of coffee shops, but they don't know the horror stories that you deal with. And so those horror stories need to be reflected in the drafting in order to protect you from them. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, all right, Elena, well, thank you so much for this. I, I know this is going to help so many nurses. And, uh, you know, I know you're going to get uh, a lot of people that are going to be interested in this and, and coming to your website. And we will put the link in there um, so they can get to you and purchase whatever they need to purchase. Absolutely. Go check out the link. Katie will put it there. And it was so lovely, Katie. Thank you so much for having me, for engaging with all of you. So have a beautiful day. Thank you.